Hello and welcome to NMR. In this video, we're going to be focusing specifically on HNMR, also known as Proton NMR. Our goal, once we've mastered HNMR, is to be able to take something like this and draw this molecule from it. But to get to that level, we're going to have to slowly build up our skills. And the first skill is to be able to look at a molecule and identify proton or hydrogen environments. So let's start with this molecule over here. These three protons are in the same environment. These two are also in the same environment. And these two also have the same environment. So in total, we have three unique proton environments in this molecule. So all you have to do is look at protons and see if they're attached to the same thing. For example, we can see that the three red protons are attached to the same carbon and so are the two green ones, and so are the two blue ones. Let's move on to another example. These two protons are one environment. We have one here, and three there. So again, in total, there are three unique proton environments in this molecule. Okay, moving on to another example, 2-chlorobutane. So, three protons there, one proton here, two protons there, and these three protons make the final environment. So in total, we have four unique hydrogen or proton environments in this molecule. How about propane? Now notice that this one has a line of symmetry down the molecule. That means these three protons and these three protons are actually part of the same environment. That leaves us with these two protons to make a different environment. So again, here we have two unique hydrogen environments. Okay, so we can see that symmetry plays an important role in identifying unique environments. So looking at the molecule on the left, what would happen if I change this chlorine to a hydrogen? Let's have a look. So we can see now there's going to be a line of symmetry down the middle. That means that these three protons and these three protons make one environment, and also these two and these two make another environment. So in total, we have two unique environments, six protons in the red environment and four protons in the blue environment. Okay, let's do one final example. Now, whenever you have a molecule, the first thing you wanna do is see if there's a line of symmetry anywhere in the molecule. Of course, here we can see that there's clearly no line of symmetry, but some people might think that this over here is a line of symmetry because it looks somewhere down the middle. Well, you can try it. If you look at both sides of the line, we can see that we have two different groups of atoms there, meaning that there's no line of symmetry. So if you're in doubt, put a line wherever you think there's a line of symmetry in the molecule and look on both sides of the line. Then you'll see if there is symmetry or if there's no symmetry. Okay, so there's no symmetry here. That means we're going to start labeling the environments and we'll start from the left. <clears throat> so these three make one environment, these two make another environment, and these three hydrogens make the final environment. So in total, we have three environments in this molecule. So now we're quite good at identifying environments. However, we're not finished yet. The next skill is to be able to draw peaks. So in NMR, the x-axis says chemical shift, and for this molecule, you'll see three peaks. Now, we're going to ignore the positions of the peaks. Those do matter, but for now, we're going to ignore where they are. And we're just going to say that because there are three environments in this molecule, we're going to draw three peaks. Each peak represents each environment. Now, above the peaks, we'll see numbers. These are known as integration trace numbers, or you can call them integration ratios. And they represent the relative number of hydrogens in each environment. For example, we can see in the red environment, we have three hydrogens. In the blue, we have two hydrogens. And in the green, there are three hydrogens. Hence why we have three above the red, two above the blue, and three above the green. Now, if we go back to the example at the start of the video, here we had a spectrum for C10H12O2. And we can see that there are four different peaks meaning that there must be four different environments. However, if you look closely, we can see that the peaks have smaller peaks within them. So in this one, we have four peaks. Here, we have two peaks. 
and this one is just one, and here we have loads of tiny peaks. These are called splitting patterns. This one is called a singlet. This one has two splits, so we call it a doublet. Four splits are called a quartet, and anything more than four, we can call them multiplet. Now we have to be able to work out splitting patterns, and we use the n plus one rule to do this. So if we apply that, that means the spectrum we have here will change and look something like this after we apply the splitting pattern. So let's go back and apply the n plus one rule for our molecule. Now the n represents the number of hydrogens on the neighboring carbon. Once you work that out, all you do is you add one and that tells you how many times that the peak will split. So we'll start with the red hydrogens. They are on this carbon and the neighboring carbon is this one. We can see that the neighboring carbon has two hydrogens, the two blue ones. So that means n equals two. But remember, it's called the n plus one rule. So two plus one equals three. And that means the red line is going to split into a triplet. Okay, let's move on to the blue one. So the blue hydrogens are on this carbon and the neighboring carbons are these ones. So we can see on the left, we have a carbon with three hydrogens and on the right of it, we have a double bond O, so there is no hydrogens. That means in total, there are three hydrogens on the neighboring carbons. Three plus one equals four. So that means the blue peak will split into a quartet. And finally, let's move on to the green one. So the green hydrogens are on this carbon, and next door, we have an oxygen, so there are no hydrogens on the neighboring atom. Therefore, N equals zero. 0 plus 1 equals 1, and it stays as a singlet. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.